as I said, these two wee screws there. So line up the notches in the stator so you can access the two wee screws. And this has been replaced with um, some normal uh, Phillips screws. I believe the originals might have been wee uh, hex screws. So you're going to need to get your, um, your hex drive in there to undo these. Okay, now you should be able to slide the stator assembly straight off the main housing, just like that. And of course, double check we don't lose these screws. Put this to one side in a minute, we'll pull the rest of it to pieces in a minute. Now you can see the advanced weights um, down the bottom of the housing. Okay, final thing is we need to remove this main shaft. What you can do is um, remove the advance, the sort of the advanced shaft um, at this point if it's all seized up. The bottom part of the shaft and the main part of the shaft um, are separate pieces and of course the advanced curve is defined by these two springs. And in cases of high mileage and poor servicing, these two shafts will become seized and they won't turn like this. Okay, if that's the case you're going to have to disassemble them uh, clean them out and grease them. There's a very small circ clip down the centre of this main shaft. I'm not going to pull it apart because it's a pain in the ass to get back together. But you'll have to undo that, pull the top part of the shaft apart, grease it up, clean it, put it back together. Okay, I'm not going to bother doing that because we don't need to. Okay, so to remove the last part is we need to take the drive gear off the bottom of the housing. And I'll do that off camera because all you need to do is punch out that roll pin, but I need to use my vice to do it. Okay, so you want to protect the housing in a vice um, with some cloth just so you don't damage uh, the housing. Take the roll pin out on the bottom. Now, you need to then slide the drive gear off the bottom. Just like done that. Be careful which unit you have because I believe there's two different spots where the roll pin can be inserted depending on what um, drive gear we have at the bottom. Before you pull the shaft out, just take a look at the um, uh, wee shim washers that exist at the bottom of the housing between the um, drive wheel and um, the main part of the housing. There's supposed to be three, three wee washers. Um, one fat shim washer one fibre washer and one skinny, one thinner um, shim washer. When I originally found this, it didn't have the fibre washer in between it, which means it had a whole lot of end play, end float in the shaft. It's a bad case because that would give you very erratic um, timing as the shaft bounces up and down. Um, make sure you replace it with a fibre washer with a little bit of give, um, because otherwise if you just pack it out with more washers, it's quite a harsh ride on it and it, you need to have a little bit of dampening um, in the shaft to, to make it um, not ruin itself. So I'll just put them off. And now you should be able to sh slide the main shaft out of the housing. Ran as it goes through to the bearings, just give it a little wee twist to make it go out. The last thing you want to do is get in there with a, um, with a hammer and try and bash the crap out of it because you'll just damage stuff. Okay, um, inspect the bushings, the lower on the top to make sure they're not too gouged and of course you don't have any play. Um, with uh, the main shaft that you see around the bearing region there's um, a whole series of thin grooves. Make sure there's no crap in this in these because this is where a little bit of oil um, will stay and lubricate the bushings um, so you want them to be clean and free. Equally the um, little hole at the bottom of the housing where the oil, a little bit of oil gets splashed into the bushings should also be clear and free of crap. Next thing what you probably want to do is pull apart the um, centrifugal weight assembly. So these two these two spring weights, a primary advance weight, uh, so a primary advance spring and a secondary advance spring. I'd advise you to pull this whole assembly um, apart, um, grease it and all the moving parts and put it back together. I've already done that um, for this unit. So now on to the final part of disassembly, which is the, um, the stator unit and the reluctor wirings. So this is at the top. 
If you turn it over, you'll notice three um, little recess screws in it. Undo those three. Okay, with those three screws undone, you should be able to um, carefully lift the reluctor wiring or the pickup um, from out of the stator housing. So that's our wiring. Hold on to that. We're going to test that. And then just carefully, um, there is a little insulating, um, little insulating cover that also sits underneath it. So take that out and hold on to it. Okay. And then just double check that this all moves freely. You, there's a, um, a larger circlip in the, this part of it, so you can pull that out and just give it a little bit of grease and assemble it back together. That's fine for this unit, so I'm not going to bother. Um, now onto testing. Okay, first thing I'd advise to test is this um, vacuum advance module. Uh, if these units are old, um, the wee diaphragm in them can crack, and of course you don't get any movement of the wee arm. Um, with vacuum, so this is what I like to do. If you take your hose, um, it can, you can even pull it off the vacuum off the off the um, carburetor. Um, hook one end up to the vacuum advance module, and of course here we've got um, quite a large syringe. And if we pull this and give it a little bit of vacuum, you should see it slide down. It only slides a couple of millimeters. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll hold it up to the camera. You can see the arm sliding in and out, so we know this unit's good. Um, most of the, I'm pretty sure you can still get these um, from certain uh, wholesalers, but I don't think they're necessarily cheap. At this point, for those of you that need a reference, I'd probably direct everyone to this. Um, refurbishing the Holden Bosch HEI distributor. Um, this was put together by someone else. Um, his email name is Fuzzy Pumper. Um, if you need this reference, which is basically what this video is based on, just Google refurbishing the Holden Bosch HEI distributor and you'll find access to this PDF. Um, so I take absolutely no um, credit um, for devising this way of pulling them apart and testing them. It all goes to this. And most importantly, importantly, in this, it has values for what um, the electronics should be. So if we get our ignition module, we're going to um, test this. Okay. Hopefully we can all see that. Right. First thing I want to do is I'm going to go through and check the diodes in um, in the module. Um, this isn't a hard and fast correct way of purely diagnosing the module because this only really tells you whether the diodes are working. To uh, to know if this is work if the Bosch um, module is working correctly, you kind of got to have it in a working unit and you got to hook up a scope to it while it's running in the car to see that you're getting the right waveforms out of it. Um, maybe, in, Hopefully in the future I'll have my own scope, so I should be able to do this procedure and I might post a video of that later. Okay, so the first thing is you test, you don't have any continuity over, um, I'll just do it so you can see, over the two, um, the far right um, ones. Okay, so the, I'll call it by number pin. So the pins are 3, 7, 15 and 16. Um, 15 is 12 volts in, 16 is the ground, so if we put ground on 15, um, power on 16, we've got no um, continuity. Of course, it going following the Bible, if we, flop them, if we swap them over, power on 16, and then ground on 16, sorry, power on 15, we get a reading of 0 0.747, which is sort of roughly to 0.6 for what I've got in my book. If you go to the far left, so if I've got power on 3 and ground on 7, I've got zip, 
if I've got them the other way. I've also got zip, which is good. If I've got, um, what's this, ground on 16 and then that to earth, I've got nothing. If I swap them around, Point six or point five something. If I then continue along, I should have zip with ground on fifteen. Oh no, sorry, I do get a reading there. But the other way, I shouldn't get a reading. Or is that the opposite way? No, sorry, I should get a reading both ways on fifteen. but only one way on 16. And I do. Okay, so I'm reasonably happy with this model.